Americans are often characterized by psychologists having a, as having a me first attitude. And we can all experience this. We see this all the time, whether we're cut off in traffic by somebody or somebody one ups our funny story, trying to tell even funny story, a funnier story, or someone downplays our suffering because they think that their suffering is even worse. And so this is not to be something that is to be a part of the church. And so Paul has something to say about this in Philippians 2, 1 through 4. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. And so what Paul is kind of talking about here kind of makes more sense if we actually say since there is encouragement and love and since there is comfort in love and encouragement and being united with Jesus, because these are true things, then we ought to live lives that look like that. And as a result, that means we need to act in humility and act in unity. And so what does it mean to be united? What is it? How do we have unity as the body of Christ? Well, it's by laying aside our selfish pride and our own selfish ambitions and instead act in a humble manner about ourselves. And, and instead, what we do is we realize that un this unity is really important because of something that Jesus said in John 13, 35. He says, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Do you want others to know that you follow Jesus? Then it's important that you pursue unity with those who are in the church, with your brothers and sisters in Christ. It is, it is one of the true signs of the truth of the gospel being real in our lives. Uh, one of my favorite authors and pastors, his name is Matt Chandler, he says this, that the wrench in the gears of Christian unity is self-interest and pride. And so the opposite end of that, what, is, what does it mean to have humility? It is not truly thinking less of yourself as in devaluing yourself, but it's actually thinking of yourself less, like thinking about yourself less often and thinking about others more often. It is recognizing your place before God that you are in need of a Savior because you have sin in your life and that as well you look at others being in that exact same place that they need Jesus because of their sin. And so you don't value yourself more than somebody else. And so this is what we ought to do as followers of Christ because the truth of, of being encouraged by being united with Jesus, by being in his love, that we ought to act in the same way towards our brothers and sisters in Christ. And so we do nothing out of our own selfishness and out of our own pride, but instead lifting others up, valuing others more than ourselves and acting in true humility. So in your groups, there's a few questions that you can discuss as part, of, uh, as part of preparing for this sermon. First is, what does it mean to have pride? And how does Jesus' death on the cross destroy our pride and our selfish attitudes? And then how do you pursue unity with your brothers and sisters in Christ? And then lastly, how are you personally united with Christ? What is different about your life and attitude because you are united with him? So discuss those in your group, and we'll see you on Sunday.